The chemical of want, desire, and pleasure. The dopamine. It releases when you achieve something, when you eat, when you smoke, or when you have any other pleasure. There are good dopamines, and there are bad dopamine hits. First, let's understand what this hormone is. What is dopamine? Have you ever considered that dopamine, commonly referred to as the pleasure molecule, may be far more complex and influential than we imagine? Dopamine goes beyond this simple label. It plays a complex role in influencing our motivations, desires, shaping our daily behaviors, sometimes without us realizing it. From a biological standpoint, dopamine acts as a neurotransmitter in the brain facilitating communication between brain cells. It operates behind the scenes, exerting influence over our impulses and decisions, acting as an engine behind our emotions and actions. Dopamine, while rewarding pleasurable actions, can also lead us into repetitive behavior patterns, creating cycles of desire and gratification. Think, for example, of the satisfaction you feel after a professional success. Dopamine comes into play, reinforcing your motivation and driving you to pursue your goals. Its ambivalence is a trap. It doesn't distinguish between authentic pleasures and artificial ones, even if they can be harmful in the long run. Dopamine equally stimulates our enriching experiences and our darkest addictions. Behind this complexity lies a powerful force capable of liberating us according to its own rules. Choice, though it may seem entirely ours, can be an illusion of autonomy. Understand dopamine and the mystery of its influence and see how it shapes our lives, choices, and our pursuit of pleasure. It's a first step towards regaining our autonomy, seeking a balance between immediate pleasure and the discovery of deep meaning in our lives. Good dopamine and bad dopamine. One moment, it's our best friend, rewarding us for every bite, every burst of laughter, every mile ran. But the next moment, it becomes our greatest enemy, pushing us toward the next sugary treat, the next dose of instant gratification, ignoring the consequences. There is a good and bad dopamine. Imagine now a scene where you finished a good workout. You were on a clean diet for the whole day. You worked hard and you accomplished your goals for the day. Well, of course you'll feel nice and your success will give your brain pleasure. But on the other side, you have bad dopamine. And it can be very bad if you don't balance it. There's alcohol, cigarettes, nicotine, drugs, junk food, and much more. And when you take a drink, a cigar, after maybe some fast food, and you feel nice, you're in that cool mood, and you think that your night is great, at least in your mind. So the next day when you wake up, you'll remember what was giving you that pleasure and that nice feeling the day before. 99% of people think about smoking again after they use a cigarette or any nicotine. And if you don't have willpower, and you don't balance your dopamine, you'll continue consuming those things. And this is a great example of bad dopamine. I don't say you should never eat a burger or pizza or smoke a cigar or take a drink. What I'm saying is that everything should be done in moderation. Celebrate your wins of the entire week or a whole month with one cigar and a drink. It's all about the balance. The crucial question, how can we ensure that dopamine remains our ally? propelling us toward healthy habits, rather than an adversary leading us to addiction. This is challenging because finding a balance with dopamine demands constant attention, vigilance against our desires, and every choice becomes a subtle battle against instant pleasure. That's why we bear a heavy responsibility to ourselves. We must understand, explore, and widely choose our actions because even our own biology can betray us. Dopamine and consuming content. What are the long-term effects of our need for dopamine on our mental health and well-being? Imagine endlessly scrolling, hundreds of likes and comments flooding on your screen, each notification triggering a rush, a friendly pat on the shoulder, a small reward in the form of dopamine. Welcome to the modern world. Likes, shares, and comments are no longer just clicks. They've become the currency of our self-esteem and social status in the virtual era. Each of these micro moments of approval releases a ton of dopamine in our brain, creating a powerful addiction to social validation. We find ourselves caught in an endless loop. You're immersed in a reward loop that drives you to constantly post, share, and interact, all in search of that next validation high. Here's an example. When you scroll and when you drag your screen, does it remind you of something? 
Well, the same scheme has been used in roulette. First of all, you don't know on what number the ball is going to fall. It's the same with scrolling. You don't know what video is coming next, which builds the mystery and curiosity to scroll more and more and more. However, the numbers reveal the extent of this social media addiction. According to a recent study conducted by the Digital Psychology Research Institute, nearly 72% of users report feeling anxiety or depression when they don't receive enough likes or interactions. Furthermore, on average, individuals will spend at least three hours a day checking their notifications, which adds up to more than a thousand hours a year. What lies beneath the surface? This continuous wave of likes can uplift us, but it can also engulf us if we don't become aware of our quest for recognition. And this thirst seems insatiable because the more positive feedback we receive, the less satisfied we become and the more that we desire. In the virtual world, dopamine becomes both our ally and our adversary as we seek constant validation while threatening our mental well-being. It's time to reflect on the impact of this addiction and find a balance between our quest for likes and our true self-esteem. Zoom on dopamine. Imagine that your brain is a film director, and dopamine is the feeling of excitement you experience when the trailer for a blockbuster movie is revealed. You don't feel the action yet, but you're eager and ready to dive in. Dopamine is produced in large quantities, not when you experience pleasure, but rather when you anticipate that future pleasure. Let's have a peek into our brain and see how it all works. Dopamine is produced in specific areas, such as the ventral tegmental area, or VTA, and the striatum. However, instead of providing instant joy, it creates a sense of anticipation, a kind of tension that drives us to take action. Here's an example. Imagine you're thinking about buying the latest iPhone or that pair of designer shoes. It's not about the object itself that triggers a release of dopamine, but the anticipation of the happiness you'll feel once you have it. The idea of a future reward motivates you to make decisions, open your wallet, and envision the pleasure of owning that desired thing. What's truly intriguing about dopamine is that as soon as you get what you desired, its production decreases. Sometimes this leaves you with a sense of emptiness or an even stronger desire for other rewards. And this is where it gets interesting. Even after achieving a goal you set for yourself, your brain, always in search of a reward, begins looking for the next big thing that will trigger a dopamine release. This mechanism underlies many pleasure-seeking behaviors where the quest for the next reward becomes an endless cycle. Dopamine doesn't work in isolation. It likes to collaborate, especially with a hormone called oxytocin. Often dubbed the love hormone, oxytocin binds to receptors on dopaminergic neurons, thus amplifying the reward circuit in our brain. Renowned researchers like Lynn Hung and Rob Malenka from Stanford University have shown how oxytocin can actually boost our dopamine levels. Imagine James, who, after an honest conversation with his wife, experiences an increase in oxytocin and dopamine levels. This strengthens his bond with her through a process of positive reinforcement. However, it's important to note that this dynamic can take a very different turn when misused. For example, in a laboratory experience, a free rat will instinctively act to free a trapped fellow rat. However, if that same rat has access to heroin, its motivation to help its friend disappears as the opioid takes over. And all of this leads us to question how our biology is constantly stimulated, exploited, or even hijacked in modern society. Dopamine and food. Is there a limit to our ability to control our desire for dopamine, or are we condemned to a quest for pleasure? Imagine yourself in front of your television screen or your phone, watching an advertisement for your favorite fast food chain. The appetizing images of cheese dripping hamburgers, and golden fries will make your mouth water. You feel that urge to order, don't you? Well, that's precisely what the food industry aims to evoke, and here's how they achieve it. The dopamine magic formula. Ever wonder why those hamburgers are so delicious and those fries are so crispy? Well, it's because they're crafted to trigger a genuine dopamine explosion in your brain. The combination of fats, sugars, and salt are all meticulously designed to activate the reward centers of your brain, creating a subtle addiction to these foods. Marketing wizards. 
fast food ads are true masterpieces of persuasion. They show you images of happy and satisfied people devouring delicious meals, encouraging you to associate pleasure with their products. Catchy slogans and special offers, they all entice you to place orders over and over and over again. Breathtaking portions. Order a standard meal and you get gigantic portions. Why? Because it further activates rewards in your brain. And you get more food for less money, which can be hard to resist. Ultimate convenience. Fast food is everywhere, and ordering has become as simple as a click. This ease of access also means instant gratification is at your fingertips, making it even more difficult to resist the craving. Well-guarded secret recipes. Fast food often has secret recipes that make their products unique and delicious. These well-guarded secrets are designed to keep you loyal to their brand. Large-scale food industry. It's not just fast foods that employ this strategy. The food industry has mastered the art of tantalizing our taste buds and enticing us to consume more processed products. From snacks to frozen foods to sugary beverages, all are crafted with ingredient combinations designed to trigger our dopamine. The next time you see a fast food advertisement, you'll understand why it exerts such an allure on you. And perhaps you'll think twice before succumbing to the call of dopamine. Enslavement by dopamine. Doesn't our quest for dopamine and our addiction to instant gratification serve primarily the interests of businesses to the detriment of our individual freedom and collective well-being? Dopamine takes huge power over our lives enslaving us to modern addiction. It's become the prime target of marketing, a powerful tool in the hands of corporations and brands. They understand that dopamine is the key to enticing consumers, to buy their products and services, and they've developed tactics to stimulate the reward center in our brains. Take online shopping as an example, with a specific focus on strategies employed by giants like Amazon. As soon as you enter their platform, you're bombarded with selected products based on your browsing and purchase history. Just thinking about it, your brain releases dopamine, anticipating the satisfaction of acquiring a new item. Limited time promotions, special offers, they all add a sense of urgency, urging you to take action. And when you add an item to your cart, you receive positive feedback in the form of encouraging notifications. You may even be offered discounts on future purchases this not only reinforces your buying behavior, but plunges you into a cycle of reward and positive reinforcement. Your brain associates the act of buying with pleasure and gratification, encouraging you to repeat the behavior. But at what cost? Companies not only stoke our desires, they create new ones. The consequences are significant. Hyperconsumption results not only in concerns related to overproduction and waste, but also fuels jealousy, comparisons, and heightened competition amongst individuals. By constantly pursuing dopamine, are we sacrificing deeper and more meaningful values in life? Today, a person's worth is often judged based on what they own and consume. We're constantly reassuring our own value based on our possessions and our ability to display our level of consumption. This competition is toxic, leading to high levels of stress, anxiety, and profound dissatisfaction. Individuals often feel pressure to maintain an image of success and prosperity, thus becoming modern slaves to their own desires. Moreover, the more immersed we are in the pursuit of instant pleasures and immediate gratification, the further that we drift from what truly matters and the simplicity of life. How can we now differentiate the important from the superfluous? We've become beings driven by artificial desires that are not really ours. Like laboratory rats under the influence of opioids, we gradually lose what makes us human. So, have we become strangers to ourselves, obsessed with the quest in our next dose of pleasure to the point of losing sight of our true identity and deep aspirations? Connected to social networks, but disconnected from ourselves, completely alienated. We've become pleasure-seeking machines without a true purpose. Society, by making the pursuit of pleasure its number one value, has also left us empty and disconnected from our need for meaning. But ultimately, isn't it we, individually, who, through voluntary enslavement, control our own destiny? Have we become accomplices to our own 
alienation. In this era, where the pursuit of immediate pleasure is omnipresent, have we surrendered our power of choice to external forces? By constantly chasing the next dopamine hit, have we sacrificed our autonomy and our ability to define what truly matters in our lives? Society may certainly promote the pursuit of pleasure as a value, but are we the architects of our own destiny? Are we willing to acknowledge that compulsive pleasure-seeking can drain us of our essence and our connection to ourselves, our values, and our deep aspirations? It's time to reflect on our own role in this incessant quest for dopamine. Are we ready to reclaim our power of choice, to realign our actions with our values, or Will we continue to be passive actors in our own alienation simply because instant gratification has become the accepted norm? The answers to these questions depend on us individually and our willingness to recognize the importance of restoring a balance. It's a choice we need to make, but it requires deep reflection and to take responsibility for our own lives. Dopamine Detox Now. You may be wondering what solutions exist to break these chains and regain control of your life and how you can control your level of dopamine. Do meditation. Dedicate 10 minutes each morning to meditation and mindfulness. These practices will help you regulate dopamine, strengthen your emotional resilience, and reduce compulsive impulses. Decrease your screen time. Take the time to reduce your dependence on smartphones and social media. Set boundaries to avoid dopaminergic overstimulation. Establish clearly defined limits. Take control of your consumption of alcohol, drugs, food, and other sources of dopamine by establishing strong personal rules. Redefine your goals. Align your goals with your personal values and passions. Discover the deeper meaning of life beyond fleeting pleasures. Invest in healthy relationships. Build meaningful connections with others to fill the void created by compulsive dopamine seeking. Develop new skills for a fulfilling life. Find new creative passions and acquire new skills to replace dopaminergic behaviors. Manage stress and anxiety healthily. Master stress management techniques to face life's challenges without resorting to destructive behaviors. Create rituals and routines for balance. Establish daily rituals that promote a healthy balance between the pursuit of immediate pleasure and the quest for deep meaning. Seek professional support when needed. Don't hesitate to seek the help of a mental health professional, counselor, or therapist if you're struggling with serious addictions or mental health issues related to dopamine. Now let's reflect together. How can we restore a balance between the pursuit of pleasure and the search for deep meaning in our lives? What is the true nature of happiness and satisfaction? And how can we become more aware of our desires to better direct them towards meaningful goals? Now, believe it or not, dopamine balance will determine whether we're successful or not. Are we healthy or are we not in many cases? Dopamine balance is something we need to control in order to have clear control over our lives and actions. Control it, enjoy it, and balance it. Subscribe and join our researching philosophy community that is growing every single day. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Good luck. As de pique.